Welcome to the Treasury of Solomon, where we go verse by verse for the book of Proverbs to find the wisdom that God has for us. Today's verse is Proverbs 1 and 5. It says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. The Amplified Bible translates this verse as, The wise will hear and increase their learning, and the person of understanding will acquire wise counsel and the skill to steer his course wisely and lead others to the truth. This version gives us a little more specificity as to what we're actually dealing with. The first thing we have to note about this verse is that the wise hear. That means that we listen. Listening to others doesn't mean that we formulate our response while we wait for them to stop talking. And it doesn't mean that while they speak, we just anxiously wait our next turn to say something. It means that we truly listen, that we take the time to allow what they say to sink in and to be understood, to be comprehended, thinking through what they're saying. When it comes to listening to God, it means that we use the inner ear, the spiritual ear that we all have within us, and that we block out our mind and thoughts and simply listen to what He has to say. When we push past ourselves, we'll be amazed at what He's saying to us. That's how He speaks and communicates wisdom to us. If we never listen, we'll never learn. But on the contrary, if we make an active effort to truly listen and comprehend, there's no limit to the knowledge and wisdom to which we can attain. Learning isn't something that can be forced upon us. They can force you to go to school, but that doesn't mean that you'll learn anything while you're there. It's been said that anybody can be taught, but you have to want to learn, and that's true. You have to have the desire to increase your knowledge, to grow in wisdom, If you're ever going to learn anything, that desire is the foundation of the pursuit of more. The next thing we have to look at deals with the acquiring of wise counsel. In the King James it said, attain. Noah Webster said, attain means to reach, to come to, or overtake, to touch, reach, or strike. That is to thrust, urge, or push to. This requires exertion. It takes time and effort. Attaining wise counsel isn't something that happens overnight. Counsel is when we get advice and direction from someone other than ourselves. We go to friends, family, and most importantly to God. When it comes to our friends and family, we're not always assured that they're going to be people who have the gift of wisdom operating in their life, which means that we have to use our discernment. We need to look for wisdom and its fruits manifesting in their life, in the way that they conduct themselves, in words and in actions. If they're wise people, we should reach out to them for advice. We should seek knowledge from them. Doing so can help us to avoid making mistakes and having to pay the same price that they had to pay. Making a mistake once is learning, but making the same mistake twice is foolishness. And that's why counsel can be such a great blessing to us. It can help give us clarity during times when we feel unsure about what to do. It can give us reassurance when we have a plan and want to make sure it's the right one. Or it can give us correction when we plan on something that would harm us. Sometimes we become so blind to what's going on and what's planned in our own lives that we need another set of eyes and another perspective to give us their view of it. When that person has wisdom too, it can be a great blessing. Proverbs 11 and 14 says, Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. We don't want to fall. We want to go through life standing strong being sure of ourselves in our course of action. So the more counsel that we have, the better. Even better than finding it in people is finding it in God, who is wisdom Himself, and who promises to lead and guide us into all truth through His Holy Spirit within us. As Isaiah said, prophesying of Jesus, He is the wonderful counselor. Who better to go to than Him? He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows our destiny. He even told us in Jeremiah that He knows the plans that He has for us. Since He has plans, His counsel will be in perfect alignment with those plans, helping us along as we do His will for our lives. We acquire His counsel by spending time with Him, listening to His voice. It may require time and effort, but it's more than worth it when we know that we're on the path that God designed for us to be on. Doing the will of God is the wise thing to do. The next thing we need to look at is the phrase, and the skill to steer His course wisely. The Hebrew word used here originally had to do with steering and directing ships. On the road of life, there's curves, intersections, bends in the road, all of which require navigation. They require steering so that we know that we're going in the right direction. You could get into your car and have a destination in mind 
and you can even start to head in the right direction. But if you only go straight and never steer one way or the other, it's unlikely that you'll ever get there. You have to steer, and it's just as important and inseparable from life as it is from driving. We need skill to do so properly. What good is steering if we don't know how to do it or where to steer towards? Steering is only useful as long as the operator of the wheel has the knowledge of its use. We can know the right way to live and conduct ourselves. We can know the right way to talk and the right way to act. But that knowledge will do us no good if we don't steer our thoughts, our words, our actions in that direction. We have to allow that knowledge to manifest on the surface. That's how we show forth the skill that God puts within us. We have to use our wisdom in the most profitable way for both ourselves and others, always staying close to God and to His will. The last thing that we need to look at is the phrase, and lead others to the truth. This is one of the most important and often the most overlooked aspects of wisdom. Wisdom, just like every other spiritual gift that God gives to us, isn't meant to just influence us exclusively. It's given to us so that we can allow its influence to flow through us as we touch the lives of those around us. Like Abraham in Genesis 12 and 2, He blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others. He makes us wise so that our wisdom can help someone in their time of need. When others see that we have knowledge, that we carry ourselves properly and with wisdom, and that we act in a wise way, directing our lives in a skillful and productive way, it shows them that if they seek after God, as for wisdom, and apply themselves, they can do the same too. God uses us as His vessels to show the world around us what He's calling them to be. As we let our light shine, His light will radiate into their lives and touch their heart, which will compel them to come to Him. The second half of Proverbs 11 and 30 says, And he that win of souls is wise. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the gift of wisdom. And we thank you that you put wise people into our life, people who we can go to for counsel, people who will offer a word in season and out of season, who will encourage us, give us advice, and correct us when we're wrong. Lord, we ask that you grant us discernment so that we can know who we should go to for advice and who we shouldn't go to. And we thank you that you're going to protect us for your Holy Spirit within us as you lead and guide us into all truth. Lord, as we cultivate our wisdom, we thank you that you're making us skillful in the way that we steer our life, that you're guiding us with your hand to keep us on the right path in a way that's in alignment with your will and with your plans for our life. And Lord, we thank you that when we live and operate in wisdom, that it won't just be for our own benefit, but that it will affect and influence the lives of those around us, that it will produce its own fruit in their life too. Lord, we thank you that our wisdom will compel them to come to you, that it will show them that they can have wisdom in their life too. Lord, we know that the harvest is many, but the laborers are few. And we thank you that you raised us up in this day to be skillful, wise laborers in your field. And Lord, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today. Remember before you leave to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and remember to like and comment below. The wisest thing we can ever do is give our lives to Christ and be born again. If you want to have Jesus as a part of your life today, all you need to do is invite him into your heart to be your personal Lord and Savior. You trust Him that you're forgiven, and you choose to live for Him who died for you. We'll see you next time as we continue to explore the treasury of Solomon and study the King's Word together.